I did say on my last video that um, I wouldn't do the diary uh, recording as I did things daily, but when I reached a critical event or a memorable event, I would then put the clips from the video diary together to produce a video. And such occurrence or event has happened because I've now actually got crops growing out actually got some plants in. Not many, some brassicas, but at least I've started. So I hope you uh, enjoy uh, the video I've put together of those clips, how I've got this far. It is five weeks though, and I haven't been at the allotment all the time. It's been very hot, the weather's been kind, so I've been doing two hours in the morning, Occasionally two hours at night, uh, and that's slowed me down. And there's another life other than the allotment, such as I've got work at home to do. I've uh, had to repair some fences and, and a gate post that's gone rotten. I've been on a Jolly Boys outing to uh, smoke uh, with my son, and we've watched uh, the last episode of Game of Thrones, which I enjoy. So there's other things that I've been doing. But enjoy. You will recall that on the first day my plan was to build compost bins so I had somewhere to put the amount of weeds I had cleared. Secondly, form paths so I can travel from A to B, not get mudded up after wet weather and get something, anything, into the ground. I began by taking some levels and assessed the land slope by what I believed to be three inch of fall in a south-north direction. Whoops! That's my first plan out of the window. It shows beds east to west. North to south gives maximum sunlight. Paths sloping south to north will drain and sumps can be positioned at their north end. The south-north line was taken at right angles to the compost bins using ranging rods and the 3-4-5 method, actually 6-8-10, as devised by Pythagoras. The ranging rods are red mop handles bought from the pound shop plus some white sticky tape and yes I do have a battery powered drill. There is a, a black one there in the distance and that's because when I brought them home my wife decided that her mop needed a new handle and she took one. But it's soon back to the Yankee pump screwdriver. Bless all those who drive with her. I've already produced a video on how I built uh, my uh, raised beds so I'm not going to go any further with their construction. That's all the timber work done for now. What's next is to dig over the bed to raise the soil level. The soil level has been raised, leaving a small area at the north end to be filled with soil from elsewhere. The intention is to take it from levelling the path areas, but if I've got my levels right, this will be a minimum amount, so I'll have to look somewhere else for this soil.
When I first started in the construction industry, it was prior to the age of the JCB. Excavating machines of the day were referenced by the prefix RB, which originates from a manufacturer called Ruston Bucyrus, and the number reference is to the length of the mast or jib. Therefore, a small digger would be called an RB18 or an RB38. Well, this is what we called a labourer, an RB1. A finomatic is a good tool for levelling earth by hand, as so does Phil Harding from Time Team. As suspected, the grading of the paths has produced insufficient soil to complete raising the bed. Not to worry, it's time to put Plan B into action. Plan B is to dig out the good soil as a pit at the north end. Rain should flow down the path to this pit which I will fill from the numerous stones I am encountering during the digging process. This will form a sump and allow water to drain. A friend came along with a, uh, a load of manure and said, don't want some? And I said, yes certainly. Just reminds me of the old musical joke when the uh, Yorkshireman went on his holidays at Blackpool and the landlady says, how do you like your rhubarb? Do you want custard or crumble? He says, no, I usually put SH1T on mine. Never mind. Here it goes, it'll do it a lot of good. Position the uh, plastic pipes, 40mm plastic pipes, uh, at uh, the required spaces in the bed, and then I uh, got down my Canterbury hole, which I do like. It makes a big difference when you've got uh, a heavy clay soil, it gets down there and breaks it up. The name Canterbury Hull is local for this district. They're actually called a Chillington Hull if you wish to buy one. They're quite reasonably priced as well and they are effective. This is what it looks like after it's been hulled. After the uh, hoeing I uh, raked the whole area over with a standard rake, taking it to a fine tilth. And now I've put in the plants. I just know the brassicas, the chap who gave them, them hadn't a clue what he'd got. Uh, there could be cabbage, there could even be um, Brussels sprouts, who knows. In go the hoops now into the 14mm uh, tubes. Five in all. Intention then is to put some netting over them. 
I've got some cheap plastic netting but it's as much use as a chocolate fire guard and I'll have to go down to the garden centre or onto the internet to get some decent netting to cover it. Another job to do is to put the conduit ties across and I think I'm going to put uh, ties either side uh, about a third up to give it some strength and something to tie the netting to. that's it uh, for this video hope you enjoyed it uh, things I've got to do now is continue with the paths put down a membrane and some pebbles draw out the uh, plot again uh, I've had some interest so I may even uh, do a video showing how I've done that but thanks for watching please support subscribe if you like it and happy gardening